Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Dr. Jonathan Larson. He's with the University of Kentucky. He's extension entomologist there. Good morning, John. Morning, how are you? I'm doing well. And this morning we're going to talk about a topic. You know, people are out more, they're in nature more due to, you know, being at home and having a little bit more time. But one of those things that we're getting a lot more calls about it are ticks. It's absolutely tick season here in Kentucky. I mean, uh, they're just, it's tick tock, tick time. They're ready to come out and they're ready to bite you. Yeah, and but we have several different species of ticks, right, in Kentucky? Absolutely. Yeah, the three that we are most concerned about, the ones that are the big human health pests, would be the American dog tick, we have the lone star tick, and then we have the black-legged deer tick as well. And, you know, we had some calls very early in the season saying, oh, my goodness, ticks are already out. They're out earlier this year. Is it a different species, or is it that they were truly out earlier? So ticks are active actually kind of throughout the entire season or the entire year in Kentucky. The black-legged deer tick in particular, the adults are active on any day above freezing in the winter. So we had a lot of kind of nice balmy days this past winter and that meant there was a lot of time for them to be up and about and that means they could be biting people during that time. Right now in the springtime sort of transition into summer, we're starting to see some of the nymphs and larvae, the baby ticks that are out as well and those are eggs that are hatching. Uh, but it, it's just a constant threat kind of here in Kentucky. And those, those seed ticks, as, as a lot of people will call them around here, they're not a different type of tick. They're just an immature, right? That's correct. Yeah. So they're the, they're the nymph ticks or the larval ticks. It depends which stage you wandered into. But those seed ticks are just a smaller version of the adult. They just slowly grow and become that more uh, well-known version that we have as adults. Now, you mentioned the three different types of ticks. Are there, you know, and people are now a little bit worried about different diseases that each one might, might carry. Uh, are, do each one of them have a specific type or are they all different? So each tick can carry different pathogens successfully. The, the most famous one is the black-legged deer tick, which is the, the vector for Lyme disease that we have in the eastern half of the United States. Those other ticks can't pick up that pathogen and spread it. The American dog tick can transmit things like Rocky Mountain spotted fever, as can the Lone Star tick. The Lone Star tick is probably more famous right now, though, for its ability to spread the alpha-gal red meat allergy, where it picks up the sugar molecule in its saliva, and then it passes that into your body. And once that's inside of you, your body reacts very strongly, and it thinks that this is an invader, and it sets your body up to react the next time that you ingest red meat in a very similar way. So you have these sweats, or you can have mucus, or you can even go into anaphylaxis if it's bad enough. Yeah, and that right there is what has me putting repellent in all of my vehicles. Um, Nobody wants to lose hamburgers. <laughs> absolutely not. Absolutely not. Now, some people have an idea that if, if the tick actually latches on, that it has to be on for a certain amount of time before it can transmit that. Is, that, is there any truth to that? That is correct. Uh, tick pathogens are not automatically transferred into you. The only one that really can happen automatically is that alpha-gal one, since it's in the saliva that does happen almost instantaneously once they penetrate your skin. But for those other pathogens, they're kind of in the back of the gut of the tick. They're not right in the foreground. And that means that it takes some time of them kind of swishing things in and out of you and them before the pathogen is actually transferred. So you have 12 to 48 hours, depending on the pathogen, to get the tick off. Ticks will feed on you for as long as you let them. Some ticks will stay attached for seven, up to even 10 days on a host. Usually people find them before that, but if you can get them in that early time range before they've been feeding for more than a day, you have a better chance of preventing any pathogen transfer. Not all the ticks even have pathogens though. It's not an automatic thing that you picked up Lyme or you picked up Rocky Mountain spotted fever. You just need to monitor the area where you were bitten. And if you start to see any rashes pop up or if you feel a fever coming on, definitely go and see your primary medical physician. But there are some things that we can prevent them from getting on us, right? Absolutely. Ticks are, they're not the great, they're, they're the best ectoparasite that we have. They're really good at their job, but there are ways that we can prevent them from using us as a host. One of the simplest things is to just wear long sleeves and long pants when you're outside. You can tuck your pants down into your boots or into your socks to help cut off one of those easy avenues that they get to crawl up your leg. You're just cutting off that tunnel and you're making it easier to kind of keep them off your body. You can wear DEET or other repellents, uh, picaridin, all these other things that are out there for mosquitoes can help with ticks as well. But one of the best things if you're doing lots of outside time 
if you're going to be camping or hunting is to get permethrin and to treat your clothing with permethrin. That's not a skin-based repellent like a DEET or a picaridin is. It's strictly for the clothes. You put it on your clothes, and when the ticks get on there, it's actually going to kill them. It's an insecticide. And so that's one of the best things that you can do if you're going to be outside for a really long period of time. All right. Appreciate all that information. And if you have questions about ticks or anything that we talked about today, make sure to contact your local extension office. Thanks for watching and have a great day.